Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over one worked example to show you how to do problems involving charge moving at an angle to a magnetic field. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you'll be able to apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. In our one and only question, it says that an electron is travelling at 8.0 times 10 to the 7 meters per second when it enters a uniform magnetic field B at an angle of 60 degrees as shown below. The electron adopts a helical path within the magnetic field. So in the picture here, we can see the magnetic field goes to the left and the path of the electron enters the magnetic field at 60 degrees to the horizontal. And we can then see the subsequent helical motion of the electron. Part A says the magnetic induction of the magnetic field is 0.2 tesla. Show that the radius of the helix is 1.97 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. This is a show that question, but we basically just need to do it in the same way as if it was asking us just to calculate the radius. Well, the first thing we need to be aware of is why we actually get the circular motion part of the helical motion. And so we can say that the magnetic force causes a centripetal acceleration and therefore a centripetal force. And what's key here is that it's the component of the velocity vector perpendicular to the magnetic field that gives rise to the circular motion, whereas it's the component of the velocity vector parallel to the magnetic field that creates the pitch in the helix. So what we can do first of all is equate our two forces. So we've got F equals QVB for the magnetic force is equal to MV squared over R for the centripetal force. However, we've said it's the component of the velocity vector perpendicular to the magnetic field that gives rise to the circular motion. So we therefore need to replace V in this expression with V sine theta. So we end up with QV sine theta B equals M V sine theta squared over R. And I've just put it in brackets to keep it separate from the other terms. And remember we're trying to determine radius, so let's rearrange this for r, and the easiest way to do that is replace the numerator on this side with the denominator on this side. So just swapping these two terms gives us r equals mv sine theta squared over q v sine theta b. And you'll notice we now have a v sine theta squared divided by a v sine theta term, so we can cancel a v sine theta from the top and bottom. So we end up with r equals mv sine theta over qb. And now we just need to simply substitute in the numbers. So we have the mass of the electron, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 from the data sheet, times 8 times 10 to the 7, the speed from the question, times sine of 60, where 60 degrees was our angle to the horizontal, divided by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, the charge on the electron, times 0.2, which is the magnetic induction from the question. Putting all that into your calculator should give you a final answer of 1.97 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Part B says to calculate the time taken for the electron to make one complete revolution, otherwise known as the period of the helical motion. So we need to find an expression for the period t. And to do this, we can start with the expression we arrived at in part A for the radius of curvature. So we had r equals mv sine theta over qb. And rearranging this for v divided by r gives us v over r equals qb over m sine theta. And you can get to this term here by swapping these two terms, the r and the qb, to get qb equals mv sine theta over r, and then by dividing both sides by m sine theta. So the reason we've rearranged this, the reason we've rearranged this to v over r is because we want an expression for the period t, and we know that v over r is equal to omega from the rotational motion topic. And angular frequency omega is also related to the period t. So since v over r is equal to omega, we can replace v over r in this expression with omega to get omega equals qb over m sine theta. However, we know that omega is equal to 2 pi f from the relationship sheet. So again, we can replace this omega now with 2 pi f. So we get 2 pi f equals qb over m sine theta. And now I can get an expression for the frequency f and then get an expression for the period using the relationship between frequency and period. So dividing both sides by 2 pi here, I get f equals qb over 2 pi m sine theta. So you could use this if you were asked to calculate the frequency of the motion. However, since the period t equals 1 over f, then we can take 1 over this expression to get the period t, which is the same as just flipping the denominator and the numerator. So we end up with the period t equals 2 pi m sine theta divided by by QB. Now all we need to do is substitute the numbers into the equation. So we have t equals 2 pi m sine theta over QB. So substituting in the numbers, we get 2 pi times 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31, the mass of the electron, times sine 60, divided by the charge in the electron, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, times 0 0.2. And putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 1.5 times 10 to the minus 10 seconds. Note here that you could have also used the circumference and the component of the velocity vector perpendicular to the magnetic field, i.e. t equals 2 pi r divided by v sine theta, which is a form of speed distance time, 
with time equals distance over speed, with the distance being the circumference and the speed being the component of the velocity vector perpendicular to the magnetic field. And you'll find that if you use this expression with the radius from your answer to part A, then you should get the exact same answer of 1.5 times 10 to the minus 10 seconds. Lastly, part C says to calculate the pitch of the helix. And so the first thing we need to be aware of is that it's the component of the velocity vector parallel to the magnetic field that gives rise to the pitch in the helix. So instead of using just the velocity vector V, we need to use this component of the vector. So to calculate the pitch, remember it's basically just a speed distance time where you're trying to calculate distance. So it's going to be speed times the time. So if we call our pitch small p, then this is equal to v cos theta times the period t, where v cos theta is our component of the velocity vector parallel to the magnetic field, which is causing the pitch, and the period t is the time for one revolution. Substituting in the numbers now, we have 8 times 10 to the 7 times cos 60 times 1.5 times 10 to the minus 10, which was our answer to part b, and then putting that into your calculator should give you a final answer of 6.0 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.